Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. It's Monday, baby. That means it's countdown day. This is the tail end of the Labor Day weekend for a lot of people. So I hope you've had a tremendous weekend and I am very thankful that you're ending it with just a little bit of old got bot as we embark on the latest countdown. And this one is sort of a uh, kind of a response to last week's countdown. Last week's was the top 10 Autobots as voted on by fans all across social media. This time it's going to be the top 10 Decepticons. That's going to be our topic this time around in the latest Got Bot Counts Down. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, light them up, baby. And hit that notification bell. It helps me out a ton, and it lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, all of the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that in the description down below. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member. And this, as voted on by fans all across social media, is going to be the top 10 Decepticons. This voting was really, really fast and furious. More than it was for the Autobots. I guess people like the bad guys. We're going to, of course, do our honorable mentions first, and we have seven of them. Uh, I think it's seven. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, yeah, seven of them. Two of them got the exact same number of votes, and then five of them got the exact same number of votes. So that's why we have seven. Coming in um, at the kind of the, the bottom of the barrel, we have Octane, Rumble, Skywarp, Death Saurus, and Laserbeak. All of them great Decepticons from different eras, but they all got the same number of votes. Pretty low, about a handful, a little more than a handful. Then we had, um, also as honorable mentions, Ravage, and this one was interesting. Robots in Disguise 2015, Grimlock. thought that was a really interesting one. A lot of people, well not a lot, but a, a few people certainly pointed him out and said he started off with the Decepticon insignia, I'm just saying. Um, I can't even recall that, but you know what? He got the vote. So, all of those honorable mentions, none of them made the list. So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do what we always do and kick things off with number 10 first. And coming in at number 10, we actually go to Transformers Animated and one of the most loyal Decepticons, Lugnut. This, of course, is the Reveal the Shield version, but I think we all know that in terms of characterization, oh, Lugnut is best known for his portrayal in animated and known not only as like a big burly bruiser but as kind of the right hand man to Megatron and somebody who was like hyper loyal to Megatron. Uh, Lugnut, a character that's not G1 but has a cult following, I love that he came in at the number 10 slot. Number 9 takes us back to G1 and the first triple changer on the list, that being Astro Train. This is my custom Titans Return version. I actually prefer this version over the Siege, but to each their own. Um, Astro Train. Yeah, I think I think voiced by Jack Angel. I believe one of, if not the fandom's favorite Decepticon triple changer, maybe favorite triple changer, uh, which is interesting. I, I guess people like trains and spaceships. I mean, how can you argue with them? Plus. His characterization as a robot was one that was always competent and powerful. So, like, as far as, you know, Decepticons being competent and then powerful goes, I always felt like things were a bigger deal when Astro Train was around. And I guess a lot of people feel the same way. And he was able to take the number nine slot. Coming in at number eight, we stick with the Decepticon Triple Changers. And you can see where this is going. Octane already came in as an honorable mention. Then we just had Astro Train. Well, what about Blitzwing? Now, to be fair, the this is the G1 Blitzwing. And while most people did vote for this, there was one vote that specifically said it's for animated Blitzwing. I lumped it in here just to give Blitzwing that extra little oomph. Technically, 
the G1 Blitzwing and Astro Train were kind of tied with the same number of votes. But if we throw in the animated Blitzwing vote, and he had so much character, especially with his spinning face. In fact, so much character that the Generations Blitzwing actually does have the face swap gimmick um, as an homage to the animated. But enough people, man, like the uh, Decepticon that turns into a tank and a plane. And you know what? Sometimes even second guesses where his loyalty should lie. I like the characterization of this guy. I like the alt modes. And so do enough fans that he was able to take the number eight slot. Coming in at lucky number seven, we have he who is possibly the most insane of the Decepticons. That being Galvatron. I guess it depends on which... Uh, time span we're looking at. If we look at season three, the guy, the guy shouldn't have been taking that lava bath. It affected his servos for sure. Uh, but I think when a lot of people voted for this guy, they voted for him based on his appearance in the movie where he was efficient, effective, and brutal, even if somewhat of a slave to Unicron. For the most part, he is, was, and probably ever will be seen as a major threat and a major force behind uh, the machinations of the Decepticons. Whether he loses his mind or not, well, I guess that depends on which pers personification of this guy you enjoy best. Some people might even like his personification in um, Kingdom the best, where he was a little more ominous. So, yeah, Galvatron, number seven slot. I can dig it, man. And now at number six, we have a character who started out in Japan but has really kind of gotten a cult following over the years because of appearances in the Prime Wars trilogy fiction because of his role in the more recent IDW comics and even I myself kind of gave into the allure of this character as a major villain so much so that he is a major part of Universal Collision, my own stop-motion series. Who am I talking about at number six? Overlord. Now, to be fair, some people said specifically the Japanese version. Some people said, I like the way that he was portrayed in the uh, Machinima series, even though that series wasn't great. A lot of people liked his portrayal in there. And then the vast majority of voters said the way he was uh, portrayed in the IDW comics. Um, He's seen as somewhat crazy. He's seen as somewhat brutal, for sure. And he is most definitely definitely seen as ruthless. How can you not feel threatened when this walking arsenal is coming at you? Enough people felt the same way that Overlord was able to take the number six slot. You know where we are. You know what time it is. We are at the most coveted of locations. The half Halfway mark. And at the halfway mark, we have perhaps the most loyal of all Decepticons in Cyclonus. Uh, it's interesting. Some would, you know, have in the whole debate about who Cyclonus was, a lot of people that uh, stick with it being uh, Skywarp say, hey, even when Megatron was revived, Skywarp was like the first one there to go over and, and like pull Megatron over and say, hey, my leader, we live again. And this guy's level of loyalty to Galvatron very much harkens back to that. I can't really argue it. Here's the thing about Cyclonus, though. Even if Galvatron wasn't around, this guy was very competent, capable, and loyal. It wasn't for show. It's the way he actually was, and it's what he expected from other Decepticons, and it's how he motivated them. And if they didn't want to listen to him as the second in command, well, he had no problem making sure that they would fall in line. Cyclonus, one of the most formidable and one of the most loyal of the Decepticons, and for those reasons, he takes the number five slot. And ironically, we go from most loyal to most disloyal with Starscream at number four. Um, yeah, okay, so I think Starscream was bound to be on this list somewhere. Whether you see him as competent or incompetent, whether you see him as capable or a coward, he is definitely one of the most recognizable of Transformers characters, and it's very difficult, I think, to really have um, a version of the Decepticons where you don't have Starscream. It's so synonymous. Whether you go back to G1 or Transformers Prime or whether you like his more heroic stance in Armada, 
certainly towards the end. Starscream is always there. He always has a major role for right or wrong, for good or bad. And enough people felt the same way, including Starscream wife, that Starscream himself took the number four slot. Speaking of formidable opponents, number three is one of the most formidable and one of the most dangerous. Shockwave. It depends again which version you're talking about. In the movie, he had those like worm digger things that assisted him. In Transformers Prime, his logic meant that he would do the most sadistic of things. In the comics, whether it's Marvel or whether it's IDW, he had some of the most dangerous plans and plot lines. I mean, I'm not even a, a, a fan of the IDW stuff, but even I got to admit Dark Cybertron was, was that was something else. Um, things I certainly would have changed, but at least it's a story even I know. Or if we go back to the G1 cartoon, even though he stayed on Cybertron, anytime someone came face to face with Shockwave, you always felt like, okay, this is a big menace, this is a big deal, because he is so capable and so formidable. And for that reason, he took the number three slot. At number two, come on, we knew that this had to happen. It is going to be Megatron. We knew that Megatron had to be on this list, did we not? Uh, now, some people have said, like, Megatron, as of late, has been overused. I don't know how the leader of the Decepticons gets overused. If you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, would it be cool to see some other leaders, you know, a Death Source here and there, or a Violin Jiger, or, you know... Uh, Dark Nova? I don't know. Dark Nova would be cool. Uh, but, I, like, yeah, Megatron, quintessential Decepticon. The original Decepticon in a lot of people's minds. I know, I know, Megatronus or Liege Maximo are sometimes put in that role. But, like, when you think Decepticons, I mean, yeah, Megatron. Megatron's your big baddie. He's the big leader. I know he had Galvatron, but even more people that aren't part of the major fandom, even out in just pop culture society, almost everybody knows Megatron and his huge fusion cannon. And probably because of that notoriety and because of his popularity, he was able to take the number two slot. Number two was the leader. We've already seen Galvatron. We've seen Shockwave. And we've seen uh, Starscream and Cyclonus. So who could be left? Who could take number one? Well, I'm going to tell you. He who took number one took it far and away with at least 20 if not more, might have been 25 votes separating Megatron and this character. Far and away, who came in at number one? Well, the one who has one of the most logical catchphrases for this position. It is Soundwave, and more than ever, it holds true that Soundwave superior, everybody else inferior. Now, I did mesh together votes for G1 Soundwave and for Transformers Prime Soundwave specifically. I don't know if there were other iterations people intended, but they did not specify if they did. Most came in for G1, but a handful that I threw in here came in for Transformers Prime. He was going to win anyway. He was just wildly taking off with the votes. But... Uh, the Transformers Prime one, I don't even think he by himself would have had an honorable mention. He might have eked into the honorable mention. So I thought, you know what? Let's just put them together because Soundwave, any way you cut it, has ears everywhere, is always listening, is always mysterious, is very loyal, and of course, more often than not, comes with his own army of minions, being the cassettes. Or if it's Transformers Prime, his chest plates. I mean, we know Laser Beak can. We know that the Beast Hunters came with the Ravage. They count, right? They count. So Soundwave and his minions, so to speak, takes the number one slot. And that's it, man. We've gone from 10 down to 1 once again. It was a very interesting list. There were votes for Bruticus and Menasaur. There were votes for Trypticon. There were votes for Scorponok. There were votes for Thundercracker, for Skywarp, for Six Shot, for... Demolisher. I, I thought that that was great. Cybertron Ransack had a couple of votes. Um, Bludgeon had a couple of votes. Who else do we have here? Uh, Spinister, one of my favorites, had some votes. Um, who else can I throw in here? Uh, Thunderwing. Thunderwing had a couple of votes. 
Um, and G-Axis. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know where your favorites fell or if they've made the list at all. I appreciate you coming by. Give me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring. Of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member. Don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single day, you right there, you do make a difference. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.